where is there? Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. I'm Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. And Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 midnight Eastern Time, and 2 p.m. on Saturday in Queensland, Australia. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. Tonight's topic is Everyday Spacer Style. And we'll be back in 8.3 seconds. Uh, stand by. I've got to set up something. Here we good, go. Good job. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. Over the millennia, we've admired many styles of architecture, clothing, etc. Like classical. Art Deco. Oh, we'll show. We'll show them. We'll show them when we get there. Okay. <laughs> so here are some examples of classical. Well, you said classical, like we were starting to read a list. <laughs> I know. I know. Hi, Cliff. Oh, hello, Cliff. Thanks for joining us. Glad you're here. This is going to be a very relaxed show. <laughs> this might be a little bit less professional than they usually are. Which, take that for whatever it's worth. <laughs> Here's another classical example. And we probably, you've probably seen these things before, these kind of nice columns. And there's some more. I know they have names too, Ionic, and I don't know what that one is. <laughs> I don't even know if this is Ionic, but that's one of the names, I think. Yeah, I think that is Ionic. The really fancy one was, um, oh, this is Art Nouveau. Nope. Or Art Deco. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, your screen has it bigger. It's Art Deco. And it is the um, the the Art Deco I saw when I, I lived in Cleveland, Ohio. That's actually uh, a bridge going into Cleveland. There's there's about, um, I don't know, they, they have both sides. Each side has a different vehicle uh, in, its, in its hands. And uh, I believe there are at least two, uh, two on each end. So that's going to be eight figures. It's just beautiful. I love, I love Art Deco. And there's some more pictures of it. Mostly um, shots of the bridge, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's Cleveland in the background, that kind of thing. And you've probably, you know, seen this kind of thing. It's a sconce. And some of the Art Deco I like better than I didn't like this as much as the, the ones from Cleveland. Well, I like the wood stuff, so. You like the wood stuff? Okay. Yeah, yeah it's nice. It's not what I think of as Art Deco. I think that's what it is, but it oh, is. It's clearly, it is. It's, it's Art Deco. I get that. And this is a very famous building. Is this in? That's the Chrysler building. The I Chrysler think. building? Okay. Yeah. You've probably seen it in different shows and stuff too. Yeah, we can get really deep into it. Definitely Art Deco. It's beautiful. <coughs> and then there's Art Nouveau, one of my favorites. And you'll see this is a little bit more natural. Oh, oh, hello, hey, Don. Dawn. She says, hey, folks, I've really been looking forward to this. Hey, that's the Guardians of Transportation. Yes, <laughs> um, the, on the bridge, yes. Yeah, Dawn is from Northern Ohio, too, and she has probably seen these a number of times as well. And Cliff is speechless. <laughs> wow, that's a first. <laughs> All right, so you'll see that Art Nouveau has uh, a little bit more you know, nature inspired, especially some of these other ones, but I really like this one because of all the stars and her crown and, and some of these colors are a little brighter, brighter than I think of with Art Nouveau. This is a little more like a more nature based, more colors that you might see in nature more often. That kind I'm of thinking thing. pastels. <laughs> pastels. Okay. Well, there are some of those, but then there's this nice bright red thing. And a lot of times they're in this sort of format, this long, narrow thing. And I can zoom into this too. You see a lot of this stuff from Dover publications. To me, that means it's probably in the public domain, which is great. And I think when I see them a lot of times in there, they're outline and you can color them yourself if you like yeah because dover makes a business out of um out of publishing yeah um stuff that's in the public domain because they don't have to pay for it right and there's other things that they do too they actually have books that are written by more modern 
authors and stuff. And so this is um, a really neat example of Art Nouveau uh, in architecture. And I didn't really realize there was too much of that out there. That's like my favorite of this series, but there are a couple more. You see the kind of nice flowy lines and that's the outside of it. I think it's all the same building. Yeah, see there's the top. And probably we're seeing one of these windows from the inside. And they have the nice nature, uh, nature-based imagery there again in the kind of muted colors. This as well, a little more reddish, but it's still sort of more in a similar tone. They're not like a variety of colors. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? One of my favorites, lots of greenery, lots of nature-based. And I think that's the inside somewhere in that building. Oh, and now we get to Victorian, which is... Let me broaden this one a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Which is pretty, well, just done up. It's castle-like tur turrets. Hey, Scott. Oh, hello, Scott. <laughs> yeah. We, we thought it might be, and we're going to, that'll be a pretty relaxed show. So please participate as much or as little as you wish. And this, I think, was because of Queen Victoria, right? Isn't yes. That the, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the style that took place in her reign. I mean, she she didn't generate the style. It's just that she was there w when the style came about. Okay. Actually, I think there were like a couple of different styles mm. that flowed through because she was there for a while. So. Right, right. And we talked about showing you Edwardian, but there were so many similarities between Victorian and Edwardian. They kind of just maybe even flowed one to the other or something. Edwardian was know. kind of like late Victorian. Late yeah. Victorian? Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, hello, Jerome. <laughs> hey, well, that'd be a neat house to live <laughs> Jeremy, in. Jeremy, sorry. Jeremy, yeah. But, and then. Oh, that's Victor definitely more Victorian, I think. Of, yeah. 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 I got another one here. That's Victorian as seen by someone building in the Midwest. <laughs> oh, yeah. we've got all these round things. Let's make them out of rectangular bricks. <laughs> yeah, out here in Southern California, you are not going to get too many things in bricks because it just doesn't work for this. <laughs> well, you, it, it works okay if you want to mound after the next earthquake. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a little prone to earthquakes out here. In fact, we just saw something on um, Facebook. Yeah. There was a 4.5 in, in San, Diego. San Diego earlier this evening. Yep. Oh, scary. Mm, 4.5 is not that bad unless you're right on top of it. Oh, okay. Or if you're in a um, in a dirt plane. If you're in the hills, it, you, you hardly feel it. I Might see. knock some dishes off the walls. Yeah, different places have a different, you feel it different. Oh, we've got a comment from here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yours is considered Victorian. Interesting. Yeah. All right. And, of course, there are a variety of other things out there. And this is a really good page of um, architectural styles. And what I really like, after the pictures, of course, and they have stuff from all kinds of places in the world. I didn't realize this was called Gothic. Of course, Notre Dame is a Gothic, a version of Gothic architecture. Right. Yep. Um, and just all kinds of different things. Um, and you can see the names here. Yeah, uh, that's Baroque. Baroque. Yeah. Like yeah. Baroque a lot. Yeah. Baroque is, oh, there's a flat spot there. We've got to do something <laughs> about that. That's okay. Baroque. And then neoclassical, which basically um, when they rediscovered the Greek writings mm. after kicking the Moors out of, out of Spain, <laughs> Then they became, then they started studying Greece and right. just at, in that era, there was a lot of, you know, mo modernish Greek um, architecture. Mm -hmm. And they just keep going on. I never even heard of things like secession or histori historicism. But what I really like down here. See, to me, that historicism uh -huh. just means like old, um, Kind of reminds me of New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans. Um, I was thinking like the Deep South, but New Orleans fits. Yeah, that mm. that era. Okay. And it was then, beautiful. That's that's a neat. Yeah. And, and they they do talk about other places this is in Japan, and this is Bauhaus in Germany. Yep. That's almost that almost reminds me of Art Deco, don't you think? 
but they but say postmodern. postmodern. So it's Art Deco taken to the oh. glass and still. Okay. <laughs> and so on. There's some Art Deco in there too. And then you have this chronology of styles. So you'll have a whole huge, look at this, here's the scroll bar. You have a whole huge list of all these different styles. And I want to point out, because I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm like, wait, they don't have the ones we're going to talk about tonight, right? But then they were here on the side. So they kind of go down and then on the side some for the segments, like this medieval Europe. Uh, I don't know why they just didn't keep, keep going down, but there it is. So I guess it was a long list, so they decided to make it. Possibly. And they, oh. they, they have stuff from all over the world. Well, I don't know what style that is, Ryan. But, hey. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Ryan. Uh, I'm glad you like turtles. They are cool. <laughs> and what is the saying? It's turtles all the way down. <laughs> so, yeah, they really have a, a, an extensive list of all kinds of different styles. So that was a really good find. And, and a lot of these I've never even heard of. So, yeah, check that out. I'm, I'm trying to get to. And there's a bunch of links, too. So that's Yeah, good. all these blue are going to be other links. In fact, you could even just kind of take a look real quick. Some of them have nice pictures and some of them do not. So yeah, every single place you, you can see a blue with an underline there. That is another place to go. And where was, where's the one? So I'm looking, I'm looking at them. Hey, wait a minute. They don't have, cause I, I was looking at this group, right? It was the right time. I didn't even know this was a thing. And then, I, oh, here it is. Here's our, our topics for tonight. <laughs> and we're about to delve into that. We will? Yeah, eventually. I want to read something first, though, because I really love this book. And I'll tell you the title in a second. But style is anything but trivial. When you pick your color or your records or your necktie or the print for your curtains, you are doing far more than just pleasing or indulging yourself. You are declaring yourself. You are saying, this is who I am. That's why those little choices are so important to you. I just love that part of this book. It's called Wishcraft, How to Get What You Really Want. And I will do a shout out for Dawn, my friend who's actually on the show tonight. She got me uh, my very first copy of that. I've bought a couple of them. And uh, I've used uh, this book just a over and over again. <laughs> well, you know, you have people you can give gifts to and stuff. It's a wonderful book. And uh, the subtitle is How to Get What You Really Want. Um, highly recommended for anybody out there who wants to delve into that. Let's see, what's this one? Oh, hey, Cliff. Um, it's our 23rd anniversary oh. today, the April 1st here. Yes. Oh, happy anniversary, Cliff. Happy anniversary, Cliff. <laughs> Jackie inspired me to go to the U.S. and got to meet you. Yep, only in Australia. All yep. right. Yep. Well, wow, congratulations. That is fantastic. Okay. So tonight we're actually going to be talking about the googie style. Right. And if ever there were an everyday space or style, I would say it's, and let's read this one out because we'll go into them in a second. Um, go ahead with that. You go first. Uh, yeah. Well, googie. Mid-century modern. Retrofuturism. Atomic age, etc. cetera. Um, and it's really cool because these aren't temples to the gods. They're not cathedrals. They're everyday items designed for regular folks. And they are meant to be used on a regular basis, too. So let's... Oh, you get to say that part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Things like wallpaper, clocks, coffee decanters, bakeware, stuff like that. And we have a bunch of it. Yep. Uh, so let's let's delve right into our different little styles. Oh, here we go. We got more comments. Good. Happy anniversary, <laughs> Cliff. Good, good. Yay! Um, more at Deco. Yep, I'm with you there. Yeah, I like I like Atomic Age and retro futurism myself. But hey. yeah, well, I like Art Deco as well as the. And you can't go wrong with Baroque. You just yeah. add more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Googie style, and there's a lot of different terms for it too. In fact, I found some new ones doing setting up for this show, and you kind of get the idea from this. There's the nice clocks. There's a yeah. big clock. And we had a car wash just like that near yeah? my house when I was growing no up. No kidding. I got in a bigger, the 70s. I got a bigger picture of it too. So yeah. 
we'll just kind of browse through this a little bit because I do bring, oh, look at that. That's neat. I, I bring up a bunch of these individually as well. I mean, it's, it's furniture and it's like your restaurant signs. And is this actually inside of a norms? Yes. That is what From I the thought. Shape of the roof, yep, yeah. That's what I thought. And those, well, they kind of started, and let's look into it here, kind of started in the Southern California area. There's the norms on the outside. That might be uh, why I remember okay. it so well, because okay. I grew up with this stuff. Yep. And there's the norms from the outside. That one's actually in operation. I've actually seen a number of them in the area. Yeah. Well, we ate at one in Orange County. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. It was okay. <laughs> yeah. But, it's not, I mean, it's a little bit more greasy spoon. Yeah. Go for the architecture, not the food. <laughs> well, that's okay. It's like stopping at a Denny's on, when you're traveling. and It's it's good and it keeps you going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they talk about um, type of futures, architecture influence, influenced by car culture, jets, the atomic age, and the space age. It originated in Southern California from the streamlined modern architecture of the 30s and was popular in the United States from 1945 to the early 70s. They do show a picture of the Streamline, and that's it. Streamline, modern, modern. Yeah, it looks. That looks like a cruise ship. Yeah, it does. Reached on the. Um, <laughs> yeah. But one of the things that you'll notice in Googie, and there's other shots of it too, but in the norms yeah. right there, um, all of those that sweeping up off of the building is kind of a nod toward carports. Hmm. And, you know, when they were saying part of the car culture, um, that's part of what, you know, carports. Um, I thought we had a good one in here. We of, did somewhere. Maybe it's down in here. But, um, but yeah, the carports were. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. This and, thing, this whole sweep of. Yeah. Yeah, the norms did it better. And there's some that just have the sweep coming way out as a, mm. like, not. Not productive architecture, you know, mm -hmm. just architecture for the sake of architecture. And I think this place is still in operation, too. No, it's not. Too. It's not. Closed. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was. All right. So you can read plenty of oh. cool. Oh, good. Um, so this says Metropolis style is very cool. Yeah, I would I would say that was Art Deco. Yeah, it's very Art Deco. Okay, good. Thanks thanks for that, Cliff. I, I had forgotten all about that. Good point. And so, yeah, you'll get some more of these uh, mid-century modern popular looks uh oh twa terminal oh yeah look at that the term googie comes from the now defunct googie's coffee shop in hollywood is that the one we saw no that was john no that's that a different one okay sure. yeah i don't know if they have pictures no they there. don't seem to have a picture here for sure in hollywood okay that's hollywood designed by john lautner okay yeah there's popular looks with do ups and i saw a note about that for um new jersey in New Jersey, that's kind of more, um, especially do up was more in New Jersey than out here. Yeah, the upswept roofs. Yeah, right here, upswept roofs, curvilinear. Oh, and, and the different materials glass, steel, neon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> boomerangs, the famous boomerangs. Yeah. And, and who can go ahead? Oh, and the Adams, which is. Yes. Kind of like um, atomic age yes. architecture. There's a lot of overlap there. Yes. I, <clears throat> I would say there's a lot of overlap between these different ones with different names. And you will, you know, find things that you like better in one over the other. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, who could forget the Jetsons? One of my favorite shows. <laughs> so they go on. Yep. Deets from 1949. And there you see again. It's architecture for the sake of architecture. Mm. I mean, those those verticals aren't functional, but they're interesting to look at. Well, and I would say if you want to stand out in the neighborhood as mm -hmm. the car wash to come and go to, that would be a good way to do it, a good marketing And it's concept. a bunch of flags that you can fly that you don't need to take down at night. Yeah. And, you know, in fact, uh, we were talking about, we saw Hollywood before. That's how this Hollywood sign got started. It was some was a real estate guy, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Who wanted to? I don't even think this was very substantial when they put it up there. No, it was plywood, and it was Hollywoodland. Oh, no kidding! But then part of it burned, and they just knocked that part <laughs> down. 
so it became Hollywood. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> That's fascinating. Was it actually called Hollywood Land, that area? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> the Land of Hollywood might have been what they were going for. That might not have well, of course, Disneyland started here, so it might have been a thing, you know. Right, yeah, and that, that was probably a reference to that. Um, right. In fact, Disneyland had a lot of of Atomic Age, Art Deco, and Googie style in its in just the lines. A lot of it's gone, but the original entrances were... Um, oh, we meant to look for a picture for that, I forgot. Yeah, were very in this style. Um, in fact, you can still see some of it. In Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland is definitely. Now, you know, Cliff, you, you have a, an interesting idea there. I would think the Jetsons is definitely more like Googie Atomic Age than Art Deco, but, you know, they, they kind of flow somewhat. Right. Well, yeah, Googie there's, kind so of there's came from Art yeah, Deco. Right. Yeah, that's what's set up here before. Yeah, as with the uh, Googie Pima. Oh, which, which is unfortunate. Oops, sorry. Yeah, that was me. Many buildings have been destroyed. Some examples have been preserved. Oh, the oldest McDonald's, and I think I have it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the oldest McDonald's stand. Yeah. And you see the upswept Downy. roof there. Yeah. That's, again, it's meant to basically reference a carport because okay. I didn't this know style that. was coming in as cars were coming in. Yeah. And a lot of houses, they were just starting to put carports on houses. Not garages, huh? Not garages. Okay. Um. Either it hadn't occurred to them, or they didn't want to lock in the fumes of a car, mm. or it hey, wasn't cold enough. <laughs> right. Or I'm the I have the first car in the neighborhood. I want everyone to know it. Ah, okay. You know, there's probably a bunch of that. A classic Googie sign at Warren, Ohio Drive-In. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's still there. Yeah, it's right with the stars, and it, it's definitely it definitely stands out. Mm -hmm. But a lot of architects thought it was too frivolous, and that's part of why it hasn't. Well, and the whole point of it was Persisted. to be frivolous. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you after know, World War was... II, there was kind of a, the thought of coming home, settling down, having having all the amenities. Uh, there was The houses were pretty minimalist, but you could put some, some cool-looking, you know, um, mm -hmm design features in it like your furniture and wall stuff and we'll see some more of that too mm -hmm. bob's big boy so there's a lot of uh, a lot of things wikipedia says jeremy, jeremy says <laughs> the hollywood sign only cost twenty one thousand dollars best of luck getting that done today yeah yeah oh i expect they keep that up because that's in a lot of things now. Mm -hmm. And if you take a tour of the area, they'll definitely point it out and take yep. you over by there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now it's a tourist attraction. Yeah. yeah. So they, they definitely talk about it. This is not meant to be exhaustive, but if you want to look into any of this stuff, there's some really, really good resources. Yeah, they're looking right there. Welcome to Las Vegas. Very definitely in the Googie style. There was a lot of that in Las Vegas. It's, they've torn a bunch mm -hmm. of it down. Starbursts. Space Age and Whimsical Influences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. Boomerang. So there's some things, there's some features that are common to all of them. Yeah, you don't see the boomerang too much in <laughs> in architecture, but you see it in decor. Decor, yeah. Oh, I like this. Uh, editor Douglas Haskell described the abstract googie style, saying that if it looks like a bird, this must be a geometric bird. <laughs> Oh, the buildings must appear to defy gravity. Whenever mm -hmm. possible, the building must hang from the sky. <laughs> yeah, again, it was architects playing with, I mean, because it was mm. after the war. Yeah. And they could play. I mean, the time for serious was done. Mm -hmm. You know, they were done being serious, so they played. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and people had some of the things that they could do that with. They had some money. They had, you know, they hadn't been doing much for a, a while. And when our guys came back from the war, our population essentially doubled. That was the, yeah, baby booming. Yeah. Well, All right. even before that, you know, guys come back from the war, they need some place to live. Mm. So, of course, we saw Norms. And this is definitely one of the most iconic Googie style buildings, buildings in anywhere. And I remember coming to this area and thinking, well, that's the... 
the um, airport terminal. No, <laughs> it's just a building. And in fact, there used to be this neat restaurant in there called Encounters. I think we have somewhere some pictures of inside yeah. of the restaurant. It is no longer a restaurant. I don't think the building is doing much of anything right now. And I think it's pretty hard to keep I up. I saw a sign on it. Oh, you did? Saying that it was something about um, some union, air, some airport union oh. building now. I guess okay. because it was there, they needed to put it to use. Well, I, it's certainly valuable real estate there on uh, the LAX airport mm -hmm. property. Uh, and th there's a lot of construction around it sometimes. And I think it's very hard to keep this this up because it's probably just concrete, right? Yes. Yeah. Concrete structure. This almost looks like it's floating, but the central tower, of course, has the elevator in it. It's probably very supportive as well. But, mm -hmm. yeah, one of the very definite classic googie very recognizable you see it in a the, lot of movies yes. any movie of la probably has that in there somewhere <laughs> yeah and some others too i bet and of course the mcdonald's oh that may be that may be the mcdonald's right yeah yeah closest yeah we saw saw the hollywood sign very impressive i never thought i would ever see it only in movies yep yeah. you were there yeah all right what else do we have here Oh, huh. this is this kind of I just love this kind of thing. And and I don't know, what would you call that? I don't know if it's Googie as much as Atomic yeah. Age or Yeah, I think it's more well it's kind of a mixture of both. You see mm -hmm. the look at all of the boomerang shapes mm -hmm. um in the sky. They have the spaceships and the got a star on the door. Yeah. The light fixture is the definitely light fixture Sputnik. Is, yeah, is Atomic Age mm -hmm. more. Yeah. yeah, the Sputnik lighting fixtures, you can still get those. Well, Lots of rockets. That'd be great. <laughs> well, and those those are actually supposed to be the electrons going around them. Ah, well, I've heard Sputnik, especially when it's got just rays of right. When, when it's got like the kind of a um, uh, a swooping orbital yeah. look, that's definitely more right. atomic. All right. So, oh, there's that theater. And you know, if you go to, and I have lots of resources here, of course, Pinterest and pictures and Wikipedia and stuff. And of course, when you come to a place like Pinterest, you can go crazy <laughs> scrolling. Yeah, my sign is another Googie sign. Yep, definitely Googie style right there. Possibly still around, but possibly gone too. I mean, this is, I mean, just a roadside motel has a cool sign and it's Googie style. <laughs> yeah. You may not know what it's called, but that is what it is. All right, so what else do we have here? Oh, here's our, our guess, our car wash. Yeah. In a bigger. And that just reminds me of growing up because that's <laughs> the sort of thing they had, you know, in my neighborhood. It's very cool with the colors. I like the colors. Yeah. And they actually have most of them in order, so that's mm -hmm. really good. All right, and, of course, all kinds of other things down here. And ads, and, yeah, there's a good one. In the Googie style. All right. Oh, actually, yep. go back to that. Scroll down to the, the mint. Sure. Um, just wanted to, yeah, right there. Yep. Um, yeah, that looks like at, it's in Los Angeles, Las Vegas. I probably is. But just look at the cars lined it was. up. Oh, yeah, and look at that. You notice the, the sign for it almost makes a carport. Oh, for yeah. For those cars. Especially this curved thing. Yeah. Even the tail fins on the cars are part of this, you know, future retro mm -hmm. kind of style well they, they were supposed to the tail fins were supposed to be airplane-ish mm. because jets were the big thing okay well and that brings us to mid-century modern so again it's it's kind of in the flow of all this it's a little different though um design movement in, in interior product graphic design architecture urban development popular in the united states and europe from roughly 45 to 69 about the same time mm-hmm so there's Post a lot World of War overlap. Two. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. There's so just a lot of overlap yeah. and different people with the same inspirations, I suspect. Hmm, could be. It's like a lot of time periods. It brings out things like I know for mm -hmm. the um for the surrealists, there were mm -hmm. a lot of them at the same time mm -hmm. doing similar things. So yeah, lots more to read. Mm -hmm. And more pictures. Wonderful, wonderful pictures. I just, I do like the Art Deco and the Art Nouveau, but I love Googie, Mid-Century Modern. Oh, and they have lots and lots of examples of houses that fall into these categories. Yeah. 
Frank Lloyd Wright, if you don't want attics and you don't want anywhere to store anything. <laughs> There's your swoop. Yep. And I, I like um, on the right-hand side. This thing here? Yeah, just the extra um, the extra cement work on the outside. Mm, this stuff is here. It's very, these... yeah. Architecture for architecture, you know. <laughs> Although it did help in the summer. And, oh, okay. Yeah, this on my side here, the stall house. Mm, that's here, isn't it? Something yeah, that's somewhere. LA. That is so very LA, you know. That's <laughs> yeah. Oh, Cal Poly Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. In fact, I saw that building when my sister went to that college. Yeah, I think I remember that too. All right, so yep, here we go. And and I love it that it's it's not constrained to just a building. It's, you know, chairs and tables. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, Cliff's is on, um, is on YouTube now. Okay. Well. Sorry about that. Thanks for coming over. Facebook. <laughs> well, actually, they mentioned it somewhere, but look at the, look at the almost lack of adornment to these. Yeah. They're very, they're all kind they're of very unibody simple, type of things. Yeah. Kind of clean lines. And. Even that cabinet, which has some some decoration on it in the mm -hmm. in the fronts, but mainly designed to hide mm. hide stuff. Mine's are of lenticular clouds. Yeah. So there's probably some of that kind of thing in there too. Mm -hmm. And of course, you go over to Pinterest, and you will get. And that's what I like about Pinterest is very heavy graphics. You can see a lot of interesting, beautiful pictures. And there's a lot of the stuff you can, so, and look at this, so what they've done to it, because this is mid-century elements. It's not the colors, though. Some of these are much more, you know, primary colors, vibrant. That wasn't necessarily That's what more they 70s. were. That's more 70s. Okay, more, okay. So it sort of morphs. It's more like this middle one here that's a little bit more subtle colors. These are pastel. I don't even know that they were pastels necessarily. Yeah. But there's your atomic. Yeah, almost all yellow. of those are atomic. Uh, yeah. Well, you've got the boomerangs and you've got star yeah. things. And I, I read something today where this is sort of a, the idea here is about a clock. Oh. So that was interesting. I mean, and look at this. That, that's 70s or 60s. <laughs> and, and I have a feeling if some of you are out there of a certain age, you probably had stuff at home that was like these. Oh, and there's some really good articles about, oh, I thought this was the top. Design trend, mid-century, modern graphic design, and beyond. And here is a good example. Although these people have done this very recently, because that's what this site is about. It's um, they do graphics, and I just enjoyed reading it because they do have some really good information here, and they talk about you know where they use it, like web design, um, and they talk about this Bauhaus movement. You can actually click on the links and go and read more stuff. History of this is beautiful stuff. Yeah, Don says, this stuff reminds me of when I was growing up. The yep. signs are classic. Yep. yep. Yeah. So there's there's probably some nostalgia in there for us, too. Like my children, my, my daughter, your children, might not have that kind of feeling for these kinds of, of designs and stuff. Uh, there's, oh. there's a house. I think that's out here, even. Oh, yeah. Well, if it isn't, it could be because that yeah. looks so familiar to me. Well, and you don't have snow, so you can have this wide open. I think part of it, too, was having the inside and the outside not necessarily as separated. Right. Although as it is here, but they try to give the illusion that it isn't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you probably have a better idea what that house really is like. Mm -hmm. And they just have a lot of really good stuff. There's, some of these are postcards, even. And I think, what do they say? Part of the postcard was, uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, but they describe it. Fluidity, accessibility, functionality. It wasn't just about how it looked. It was also functional. Yeah. Radical furniture, fine. And part of it was to, you know, decorate up these sort of simple, minimalistic houses. Yeah, because there was a, when people came back from World War II, they started just laying down cookie cutter houses. Yeah, whole neighborhoods would go up, and they'd change the trim on the houses, and that's would be the only difference between 
every single house in the neighborhood. Mm, okay. And so, yeah, people were trying to put their own spin on things. Mm -hmm. but they were all shopping from the same store, so their own spin looked like everyone else's own spin. <laughs> oh, well. well. And I do like how they talk about, you know, what as minimalist, rejecting ornamentation, conservative, classic. Lots of neat terms that give you a real good idea of this style colors neutral bold and vibrant how they are i don't know <laughs> but then they give you some nice pictures of that so and i think yeah look at this this is this is a more modern version that they've actually designed this this website is all about their graphics designing and that they keep saying well you can find this at our at our well, graphics design shop okay here are some designs look at how the roof sweeps and oh, they yes. have the extra glass and they have the carport right attached to the building yeah and that's yeah that's typical of that style oh and they go, go on oh furniture yeah well the sydney opera house now that's a, that's different <laughs> pile of seashells yeah i don't know what style that would be considered kind of thought that they were going for um sails oh like on a ship uh, like yeah. a, a sailboat I thought that that's what they were going for, but Cliff, you would know better than I would because right. I get all of that info secondhand. Yeah. -ish. Yeah. Now, see, I, I kind of like how they have some of the colors from that era, but look at this. These are not exactly the the little design features you would find. Not quite. That's more seventies. Okay, so so it keeps morphing. So right, yeah. You're gonna, but I, but this is modern. They've created this most recently. Yeah. And they, they talk about them. This is what they're called. And they just go on and on. I have a bunch of these. Oh, look at that. 1950s atomic patterns. Very definitely something you would have seen in somebody's house on the wallpaper, for example. I just love this one. And they just keep going on and on. But it's a great article to read and learn about all these other things. Look, mid-century modern graphic design. Suburban home. City. It's beautiful. Oh, maybe this is where it is. Okay. Uh, I want to see postcards featuring this design style displaying motifs like. Yeah, I see the comment. Don says, I remember the <laughs> ticky tacky city streets, but 20 years later, all the modifications changed that sameness impression. All righty. Yeah. I'm ticky tacky. I'm curious what, what, you, what you're meaning by that. <laughs> yeah, so here's an example of a postcard that you might have found at that era oh here i love this part uh what's so interesting about this graphic design ephemera was the quality of paper on which it was printed mid-century modern postcards were what's known as linen type postcards which are which differed from the postcards we know today by their finish today when we buy and mail postcards they generally have a glossy feel linen type postcards were the opposite with a surface texture that was closer to fabric hence they were called linen type postcards and I grew up in Orange County. There was a reason why it was called Orange <laughs> yeah, County. They, these grow orange groves were everywhere, I guess. Yeah. At, at last I heard there's only one single orange grove in all of Orange County now. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I never saw that. I came here too late for that. Oh, but you yeah. grew up with all this around you, yeah. right? Yep. I, I remember on cold nights, the air would get nasty because they'd burn smudge pots to try to keep the frost oh. off them. Yeah. Um, Cliff, I have my own spin on things. Yes. I live in an extreme carriage. Yep. I think your place is amazing. All right. So then they go on and on about. There's another one. I guess this is where where we find out what they mean by that. Um, that almost looks like Catalina. Yeah. It was, what did they say? I forget what they said. Um, but, but but they talked about this. They were uh, oh. were they neutrals and bold. Oh, that's <laughs> I was like, wait. Salt Lake, oh. Utah. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Oh, is that what it says? Yeah. Great. It's all like Utah. Yeah. Okay. And on and on. So plenty to read there. But here is kind of. Atomic age. Well, yeah. It's somewhat googie. Well, mid again, they kind of they yeah. all flow, don't yep, they? Yeah, they do. And you have lots to choose from if you have a preferred version of any of this right. style. Yep. So. Yeah. Because I, I remember seeing that in. Not our house, but someone's house, someone in the neighborhood. That's yeah. 
and there were like the kitchen chairs and the it was even on the even on the surface of the table sometimes you could see mm -hmm. some of these design elements to me this looks kind of modernist because look at these boomerangs they're not they're not really the same right as the boomerangs from that era i but think they're actually doing a good job of appearing to be that era because mm. they they didn't do a very good job of lining up the colors on the on the prints. Was it, that on purpose, do you think, or was that because their printers weren't as good? I think it became on purpose. I see. I think it didn't start on purpose. I think okay. that that it was originally because they would run each color as a separate pass, and oops. And it just kind of didn't quite mesh. Yeah. And they, they essentially stopped caring, and then it became a design feature, <laughs> I think is what happened. And, and I look at this, too. I don't remember big, big fat brush strokes like this in there. Yeah. They were thin lines with, with colors, like this one here. Mm -hmm. The color behind with these lines and sometimes the dots on the mm -hmm. end. Got another comment. Oh. oh, I lived across the harbor from the opera house when I saw it being built 10, 10 odd years. Oh. Okay. Ten? It's that's uh, more. It's gotta be older than that. Or maybe even that, not that it took ten years to build. Ah, uh, okay. So, and you can definitely buy stuff oh, in that's, these that's tiles neat. now. Yeah, that's just neat. That would be cool. That would be cool. We actually added some links to things like this in the description on the YouTube page, um, so you can go find them for yourself. Uh, that would be awesome to have. See, I think it's more modern too. Look at this kind of. Yeah. It's atomic ish, but it's very stylistic. Yes. I love these rockets. Yeah. See, there's definitely atomic stuff there. And that those rockets, um, the vertical ones are very atomic gauge in the the two tone, basically like, making it try to look like it's lit from one side. Mm. You know, but very simplistically. There were a lot of movies out there. I think I even have some links here that are to describe movies with different design elements from this mm -hmm. this era. All right, and then there's retro futurism. <laughs> I mean, we could go on and on. There's so many of these things that are kind of the same time frame, kind of similar. Again, you've got a lot to choose from if you have a preferred style. And I, I don't, like retro futurism. You do. You do. Why do you, what do you like about it? Um, I like the old styling, but the like, um, almost sci well, the sci fi ish ishness of it, okay. Just the you know, the futuristic, but with old styling. And I, I feel like you can see a lot of the World War II idea in here. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that. Retrofuturism, at least this version of it, because mm -hmm. retrofuturism covers a lot. Yeah. This is more um, <laughs> what they call diesel punk. Yes. Um, you know, steampunk is brass and leather. And well, it's steam, the, the motors yeah. that are right. run by steam. Diesel punk is generally um, iron, iron and aluminum. Yeah. Yeah. She says kind of steampunk. Yeah. Kind of. It's, yeah. it's a little bit different. But again, Lots of choices. Yeah. Lots of possibilities. Pick your pick your version yeah. that you like the best. Yeah, steampunk tends to be brassy and have fiddly bits. Mm. Whereas gears are very yeah. prominent in steampunk. Yeah. Whereas diesel punk has smooth coated exteriors. Mm. Basically, they assume they don't have to they don't show all of the mechanism. They assume the mechanism's in there somewhere and just a little more black box effect, okay. Right, yeah. And Whereas with steampunk, it's kind of more visible. Right. Cool. I hadn't thought about it. Very yeah. good. Very good point. Yeah. And I think uh, a lot of these are from a couple of different words. Uh, yeah. Right. A J. Adjective. Retrofuturistic. Retrofuture. And then we'll see some other ones here in a bit. And it's like, oh wait, which one's which? Well, if it's done now, it's one way and if it's done before it's the other way so uh -huh. this this is more about things that i think in the past we're talking about the future yeah i think yeah again it's whatever you like we've got oh look at this classic huh 
and you can you can read up all about all of these things. Mm -hmm. I don't think I like this one as much as some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To varying time periods and futures and visions does not provide a unified thematic purpose or experience. A common thread is dis dissatisfaction or discomfort. Okay, so that's a little bit more a different idea than some of them. Because I, I was trying to find this. I was desperate to find this. They talked about the hopeful, hopeful optimism of the future for some of these styles. That's That was kind of their purpose, their underlying idea. Mm -hmm. but I could not find that exact quote. Yeah. But they have a lot of things in here. I mean, they reference, reference all kinds of different things. Yeah. Well, and you're, if you're just satisfied with the present, why not do futuristic stuff with past stylings? <laughs> you get the present right out of there. Yeah. Uh, and, that, like, I came across some new words. I had not heard Adam Punk before. Uh -huh. Diesel Punk. Yeah, these were, it was like Ray Gun Gothic. What? <laughs> That's kind of. It looks more googie to me yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, they do mention googie there. Uh, googie, streamline, modern, and art deco architectural styles. So, see, art deco is in there. You're right, Cliff. Look at that. You're right. And they talk about all kinds of different uh, designers. So, lots and lots of fun stuff. You want a rabbit hole? This is a really good one. Because <laughs> there's so many... So many aspects to it. So many, so many different like, craft work. These are really neat. Yeah. Now there's. They had um, some of their, um, their albums, their um, oh, album covers. Yeah. Um, there's a book out there somewhere, The Tomorrow That Never Was. Hmm. It might be in one of the tabs here. Yeah. It's. Stay tuned. Okay. Yeah. All about, you know, like the flying cars and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, I mean, even fashion, of course, architecture. There's the Googie style. Yep. All right. So that one, what are we talking about? Retrofuturism. And then we have some retrofuturism images over here on Pinterest. And these are just wonderful. Oh, look at this. Rockets in your front yard. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Who needs a carport when you have a rocket? <laughs> But they've got the swept roofs for their carport. They do. <laughs> I love it. Now, I think this one's a little bit more into... Uh, uh, 70s-ish. Well, and they, they called it something, too. I think it's I think I got it set up here. Oh, okay. Oh, and I just love this one. But I think it's not quite the old-fashioned kind. You can see some of the different things. I don't know that they had the boomerangs and these lines going through them. Yeah, it's someone's separate. yeah, it's someone's modern idea of uh -huh. these different styles. Fourteen years, fourteen years. I started the year I was born. At Sydney oh, wow. House. Wow. And there's the Jetsons. Uh -huh. I love the Jetsons. Ah, oh, look what they did to their atomic starburst and accents. And I think that's uh, that's one of these other ones, too. There's one of these Etsy stores has, uh, like, decals. Uh -huh. And there's some really good articles. Retrofuturism, taking a look back at retrofuturistic art. Wasn't that long ago, April April of last year? I can get rid of that ad, I think. Oh, I can. Uh, the X right there. <laughs> they pop up again, so. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't really get rid of it. But see these muted colors. This might be a postcard, actually. So to me, it's kind of more about colors and shapes of things. And oh, and here they talk about it. Simply put, it was a 60s futurism movement. Looked at how the imagined future would have looked like for people during and prior to the 60s. Think of it as us looking at people from the past who are looking back at us who are from the future. <laughs> what? <laughs> You get the idea, right? <laughs> sure. Perfectly clear. Yes. Uh, let's see. There's some good pictures in here. Here's one. Oh, that's neat. Look at that. An example of retrofuturistic building. They don't name it, though. But it does look yeah. like one coming up. The one in Seattle. It's not. Oh, the two trends of retrofuturism. Okay. Uh, so you can look at it from, from the vantage, your point of view being the past. How they perceive the future and i think the other one is from the future uh 
How's it go? I forget. But they said it before. <laughs> Created designs based on space age like future, which has also been described as utopian world. That's that same picture. I don't know there's a lot more pictures in here, but yeah, there we go with the diesel again. Anyway, some really, really great articles. I just plugged in these different words. Wow, look at that thing. Okay. Ah, oh, there we go. Googie. So you get to kind of start feeling like you kind of know these styles. There are different aspects of them. And I think when you're saying which what what's atomic age versus googie, unless it's a real clear example, it's basically depends on how pedantic you want to be. And you know, I can even see that uh, the modern one, uh, uh, the ship. Well, yeah. This looks like the bow of a ship, doesn't it? Yeah. What do they see? Caribbean Motel, uh, New Jersey. Came, uh, they don't even say what. Well, Caribbean would notice the reminiscent space age shapes, namely a suspended ramp. Otherwise described as levitating ramp, panels of glass walls, flashing neon sign with the name of the motel decorating the top of the building. Uh, overall appearance is something from another age, something more modern yeah. than what everyone's used to at the time. Yeah, there were a lot of ramps in some of the styles, which made those buildings much more accessible than a lot of the more modern ones. Mm. Um, yeah, that works in, in Southern California. <laughs> Being from Northern Ohio... A little bit of ice on there would make that a fun trip. <laughs> no. At least you got ah. hand rolls to hold on to. Oh, it started in... 1959. Wow. wow. Thank you, Cliff. All right. So there's a lot more here. I didn't even read through this whole one. And there's there's like not even um, a third left. All right. And then there's a really good example. Retrofuturism explained definition of aesthetics, fashion examples. Look at this thing. That's a neat picture. <laughs> that is really cool. And what's important here? Oh, okay. Uh, Back to the Future 2 sneakers are a piece of proper retrofuturism. So these, these people dive deep. So it's an aesthetic depicting how previous generations thought their future might look one day. All right. So we got that one. And then they show an example of, oh, here it is. Uh, on the other hand, Elon Musk's cyber truck is futuristic retro, an aesthetic that attempts to show how the past should have looked as seen from a not so far future. So if you got that all sorted out, you explain it to me because I do not. But those are cool shoes, right? Mm -hmm. Aren't they the hover ones too? Don't they hover? I don't remember. <laughs> what a great series of movies though. I love those. And I hadn't even really seen this image of the um the tesla truck oh so that was kind of cool yeah. to find that and see that what else is in here that look at this what is it who invented it themes aesthetic genres on and on and on <laughs> you could really spend a lot of your your precious time <laughs> doing this yeah see i don't i don't kind of get how that it really fits but um, they have big windows don't they <laughs> yeah retro futurism because of course <laughs> tiny windows that that was at the time would have seen as futuristic because mm. only the really rich people flew mm -hmm. and these people aren't dressed as really rich people no and that's a family over in that other airplane so that's you know kind of like ah. the luxuries available to everyone well and like they'll traveling to space will be available to all of us one day too we have the same yeah. same kind of things going on I, I think of it in parallel space with planes. Mm. Yeah. John, I can hear your call, though. <laughs> You're many years away. It's a song. I can hear you. And I don't know exactly how it goes. Uh, you'll hear me. Anyway, I know what you're saying. Oh, okay. It'll pop back up again. All right. So, again, this goes on. I'm trying to let's see if we can get to some of the clothes. That's an interesting article. Kind of hard to read, though. So let's see. Oh, look at this thing. I thought this was amazing. Amazing. Look at this old, old, old typewriter and this fancy, fancy chair. Oh, she, like, oh, it's for taking dictation. Okay. Those are headphones. Ah. It's not just styling. Okay. So it's like a translating? Not just translating. It's just dictation. She, 
my guess would be she's um, writing down something that someone's saying somewhere. Okay. So let's see. The, the Luigi Colani office chair, 1970. <laughs> yeah. Looks, well, look, look at the way she's dressed. That's 70s. Okay. But um, Cliff says, it took so long. Each piece was individually cast one by one and to enhance the acoustics. Wow. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Times of question about how the coexistence of past, present, and future in the light of preserving culture, history, arts, without being crushed by the accelerated technological progress. Where are the clothes? I want to see the clothes. Oh, okay. Your proper retrofuturism. Los Angeles Times Magazine from, what does it say? I think it's got the date there. I cannot read it. But it, they're A saying. April 3rd. I got that part. 1988. 88? Okay. They, they're projecting into the future. Los Angeles 2013. Techno comforts and urban stresses fast forward to one day in the life of a future family. So that's the proper retrofuturism. I thought it was funny. Futuristic retro. Oh, look, Facebook in the style of mm -hmm. YouTube, which, of course, didn't exist back then. None of these did. Right. Skype, Twitter, same thing. Uh, but they make them look like old ads or magazine pages. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to see the clothes. Well, there's steampunk, clearly. Yep. Uh, let's see. Features are retro by using old Georgian styles in a modern technology context to create futuristic looks of a neo-Georgian flavor. But they say steampunk here. Mm -hmm. From the Wild Wild West movie. Yeah, Wild Wild West movie. Uh, that definitely had yeah. a lot of steampunk in it. Yep. Oh, th then here's a contrast. Um, Wild Wild West was a lot of steampunk. Mm -hmm. um, and steam engines, too. Yeah, what's that one about the tomorrow, the future... Um, we were just talking about that movie. We saw an image oh, of it. Um, yeah, the time, uh, yeah, it's up here. It's in here. Okay. Yeah. But that one's more diesel punk. Is it? Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, we'll see. So they talk about, oh yeah, here, oh, here's the Kraftwerk album covers. Uh, I love this. Uh, early retro futuristic concepts drew inspiration from art, literature, music, and fashion from the factories, buildings, cities, and transportation systems of the early machine age. You got a comment? Yeah. Oh, he's still, uh, that's why I love my Corvette Stingray. The, the style. style, yes. Yep. The I love the old, and the new ones are kind of, they're they're very similar, only they're edgier, I think. They have more, more angular. Yeah, they have the curves, but they're kind of, uh, what's that called? They're faceted curves, like on beads. If you get a, a little bead, I do a lot of crafty stuff. Yeah. It's faceted. That's what the Corvette is. They're very nice. They have that nice uh, body shape, but they're kind of faceted. Kind of the the modern Corvette is kind of like Corvette done by the Autobots. Uh, yeah, although, we just saw one the other day, and it was yeah. beautiful. I thought it was beautiful. Although the, the modern Mustang is like, a nothing car. It's like. Well, the world cars are all looking the same these days, yeah, I think. Oh. Yeah. It's a marshmallow on wheels. <laughs> that is a funny description. <laughs> what you got, Don? Um, that person, that building is so magnificent. Which one? Know. Which building? Are you talking about. Is it here? The, um, are you talking about the Opera House in Sydney? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, that would be wonderful to go there and see that. Oh, hey, no. Daniel, welcome. No, I wasn't talking about Tomorrowland. That's something else. I was talking about the one where the time barrier one. No, not no, the oh, time not barrier. the time barrier one. Okay. No, it was a fairly modern movie. Okay. Um, where they're in big airplanes fighting a a giant robot. It's not coming to mind. Captain Future. Oh yeah, yeah, the sky. Uh, there's sky, sky is in there too. Yeah. But yeah. Shoot, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's definitely diesel punk. Yeah. You're right. So these are some craft work album covers. When we had album covers, I think we've lost something there. Craftwork 1970s yeah, albums. Opera House. Yeah, the Opera House. Good. Uh depicting retro futurism aesthetic. 
All right. Oh, look at this thing. Pre post apocalyptic aesthetic. And that's actually very reminiscent of um, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Yep. And it was always raining in Blade Runner, though. Yeah. Well, when it was this. acid rain, they were always covering up. Mm. But, um, Metropolis by J. Otto yeah. Smurray. Yeah. That also looks like Fifth Element, too. Oh, yeah. Although Fifth Element was in the design, you know, was in the design of that. Mm. Ah, Space Age Retro Futurism Aesthetic. I like this stuff, too. Oh, this is from Russia, I think, too. Uh -huh. Yeah, TM cover, Soviet Russia, 1953. The second cult, central theme of Retro Futurism Aesthetic explores the nuclear age and space age styles and colors. Yeah, they talk about the colors here versus... The colors there. Uh -huh. It's very interesting. This is wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, let's see, cyberpunk. Yeah, this is uh, this is kind of interesting too. Cyberpunk, steampunk, diesel punk, atom punk, ray gun gothic. He's depicting a potential future from a specific time. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think he's yeah, Cliff. Transformer. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the new Corvette, yeah. Oh, here, yeah. Oh, the new Corvette, yeah. Yeah. Got it. But, um, yeah, I never really liked steampunk that well. Uh, or you mean cyberpunk? Or cyberpunk, yeah. Cyberpunk, that's what I meant. Because it's a very negative. Mm. You know. Oh, yeah. here we go. Here's Blade Runner. Blade yeah. Runner, yeah. Yeah, here it is. Uh, compared to other genres, cyberpunk describes a dystopian future what a post-apocalyptic world helped by outlaws hacking the futuristic machines controlling humanity. Mm -hmm. Oh, and here, if you're looking for a quick explanation of cyberpunk, watch the 1982, a 1982 <laughs> Blade Runner movie. See Blade Runner 1982 poster below. See, that's, I like this stuff though. Yeah. I liked it. It was, it was kind of dark and kind of dystopian. Yep. It, it was new and interesting. Okay. But not, now, to me, it's neither. Okay. <laughs> it, it's kind of like gritty. Yeah, gritty's yeah. been done to death. Ah, you know, got it. It's neither new nor interesting anymore. Uh, the me. movie has almost all characteristics of the cyberpunk genre, from architecture to fashion and back. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Daniel says, um, solar punk is pretty new. I, I haven't even heard of that yeah, one. Is that it's... new? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, upload delay is about four to five minutes. That's Still, okay. Still, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I, I, I've heard I, you I think, haven't. I think haven't, we can parse what you're talking about just mostly, by remembering what I was talking about. Mostly, yeah. And uh, I heard you still don't have many clear skies out there. I'm sorry. Yeah. So definitely steampunk. A lot more browns, lots of steam. Well, and it's because it's supposed to be decay. It's supposed to be rust and decay. Ah, okay. It's supposed to be worn down. I guess I didn't get that as much. What's uh, this one about? I forget what this time one machine. is. Time uh, machine. Oh, okay. On the uh, Steampunk describes the retro futuristic universe, incorporates technology and aesthetics inspired by the 19th century industrial steam power machines. Okay. Yeah, steampunk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, electricity is a mysterious force considered the power source of the future. Well, if that's if you had steam, electricity would be. Because it's definitely different than steam. It's very... Well, and if you think about it... It's almost invisible. It's, it is the power source of today. Therefore... It is. For when, when when they... You know, when Jules Verne was writing and stuff like that, and H.G. Wells, it was the power source of the future. Well, but Jules Verne didn't... Wasn't his... Um, it wasn't a, a nuclear submarine? Wasn't it powered by nuke? No. Well, it wasn't. Um... I always thought power. it was a nuclear. They, when you, the movie did it nuclear, but the movie was written in the 60s, you know, it was done in the 60s, 70s. Mm. The book, it was a chemical reaction. Ah, okay. Um, Interesting. I, I saw another comment, so go oh, ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cliff, um, Astro, SG, <laughs> Don. You are quite welcome to visit our fantastic land as big as the USA. Yes, yep. it is. Yep. Yes, it is. 
And it's very too, I'm sure. So here's Diesel Punk. Mm -hmm. To me, that looks just kind of rusty. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, a submarine in the sky, that's definitely kind of cool. Yeah, and that's not all of Diesel Punk is that. Yeah. You know, is that rusty more it's more brushed and clean most of the time and they say it's the most recent re retro futuristic genre diesel punk yeah associated with deco dense contemporary movement yeah, of art yeah. deco okay but in a more sophisticated form art deco seems to be throughout mm -hmm. these different styles mm -hmm. inspiring a bunch of it and this clothing of diesel punk is like okay that's a little different all right, here we get to Adam Punk. Aesthetic centered around a view of the future from the perspective of the 50s. And I don't know if they showed other places, but there were some cartoons that were short cartoons that showed like futuristic stuff. Okay. And this is very reminiscent of what those looked like. All right, so it may have been Adam Punk. Yeah. Which doing the, you know, getting ready for this show, first time I heard this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if only she could be there on April 20th. Yes, right. <laughs> All right. Let's see, what's this one about? Oh, still Adam Punk. But this is more. But they talk about drawing inspiration from the sci fi magazine and movies of the 50s, 60s, their vision of the future and the traditional American values, nuclear family, and the suburban lifestyle. And one of the things that you notice there, where's nature? Nowhere. Yep. Oh, wait, there's some bushes right there next to the Eiffel Tower. That's There are? Right there. <laughs> oh, right here? Yeah, but if you notice, they're they're very contained. Yes, they are. Um, wow. Now, Way different than our Nouveau, which is all bushy and right. flowery and nature. And if you want this some, good, deco. some good examples of this style, yeah. look at the construction of the government buildings of Brasilia. Brasilia, mm. which was, you know, the capital of Brazil, they basically put made a city designed to be an efficient modern city wow. in the middle of Brazil, next to nothing, <laughs> and it's all style and no function. Okay, but it looks neat, but you can't get anywhere except by car. There are no mm. sidewalks anywhere, mm. you know, and there's nowhere to park because they don't have parking lots. I love it. So I keep looking at this thing and it's got Art Deco and the Diesel Punk. Yep. And you've got this thing. Ah, it's pretty cool. There's a lot of things in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got another comment? Yeah, Don. I had a 69 LTD that looked just like that blue steampunk car. Oh, here? Yeah. <laughs> Except that it probably did not have the jet turbines on either side. <laughs> I think those are in the cells. They, they, they might have they might have had the fins though. Might have had the fins. And I, I remember Cadillac that had like rubber things, rubber cones on the bumper. Okay. You know, I'm looking at these lines and there's a lot of them in these. And is it where the car is driving because it's driving itself? I think there might be like electrical, that might be an electrical rail. Okay, all right. That makes sense, too. So interesting. And so where do these people come up with it? Okay, Ray got gothic. That's what I was thinking. Uh, where is it? This other one was. There was a picture. I think it was over. Anyway, with the girl on the jet. That's where I went with this. Ray gun gothic. Also new to me. <laughs> So let's see. It's a catch-all term for a visual style that incorporates. Oh. <laughs> you you wanted jet propulsion on your car, huh? <laughs> it's a catch-all term for a visual style that incorporates various aspects of the streamlined modern and Art Deco styles when applied to retro futuristic science fiction environments. You know, really, I did go down this rabbit hole. <laughs> I found a uh, lot of this stuff. Look at this. Just reading more and more of this article. I think he's yeah. just finding different ways to combine the the same words in different orders. Okay. There. Yeah, maybe. Another ray gun gothic. But mostly mainly oh, that's used very and 40s. in science fiction images. Yeah, that's very 40s. Okay. That's Hugo Gernsback type of stuff. Uh, this, he, he was a, yeah, there it is. He right was an editor, Gernsbeck. not a not an artist, but 
he would pick the artists. So they yeah. said they got the Gernsbeck Continuum. Yep. 1981 science fiction short story by American Canadian author William Gibson. Uh, it's the Hugo Gern. There it is. Yeah. American Pulp Science Fiction Magazine. Yep. And they talk about some of these magazines yeah, in there too. Yeah, that was one of Gernsbeck's magazines. Cool. Yep. Amazing stories. Pulp January published by Gernsbeck, 1928. Mm hmm. Ray Gothic is most similar to the Googie or Populux styles. But predates them. Mm hmm. So interesting. Ah, here we go with the fashion. I did not read this before. Okay. Uh, all right. So just looking quick. Do I, are they going to actually? Sh oh, okay. Because Pierre Cardin apparently was definitely into this retro futurism style. And apparently that is it. Pierre Cardin's 1969 collection. In the exhibition, Pierre Cardin. I did read this. I did read this. Cosmo Core, because of the astronaut lookalikes. And I guess he was invited to, yeah, in 1969, NASA even commissioned, NASA even commissioned Cardin, Pierre Cardin, to design a spacesuit of their own for actual space travel. And apparently that's it with him in it. Pierre Cardin's moon. Oh, maybe not. I thought that was him in it for NASA, no, 1969. That, that's an actual moon uniform, I think. But I don't think they wore those that to the moon, though, did they? Well, that might have been one of the ones that they were making for it. I don't oh, know if that okay. made the cut. But there's... <laughs> this thing is just... I think that's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> this is where this is what tells you that most <laughs> fashion designers are gay. <laughs> because they hate women. That's That's the only thing that you could think about that sort of thing i think of it as art it's merely art on a human being all right so let's see this this guy is in here too andre courgette <laughs> i always think of courgette which is a british term for a zucchini <laughs> when i see that word 1964 collection uh -huh. Carnot did something that even his closest colleagues did not and that was to intentionally sell the future as a truly better more inclusive place so he was he was definitely into the future. And that's just wild looking right there. I did see these. Oh, Raquel, Raquel Welch. All right, from the 1964 collection. He was an idealist, but I don't think he was selling escapism, says Ruth Falafera, a New York Times reporter who wrote Cardan's obituary for the paper. People who now refer to him are indulging an escapist mentality because God knows we need a change. <laughs> oh, this thing was crazy. It's uh, they call it uh, polished chain mail. Look at that, and these they're just crazy looking. So again, way way okay. Here's a spacesuit. Pre-fall 2022 22 range dives into a sort of groovy youthfulness. I don't see that, but okay. <laughs> looks like shambling space zombie to me. <laughs> You know, oh boy. <laughs> you know, this is why I never get invited to the fashion shows. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Uh, just like Cardano did, once did, the contemporary designers are craving the sort of optimism that only the idealistic, idealistic future can provide. Sure. I like the lights, though. All right. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Okay, uh, there's not too much more of this, so I, I think I'm going to move on. If you want to look at this, go for it. And, the, okay, so this is how retrofuturism imagined the highways of today. Again, are we on, like, self-driving paths here? Look at this. They're always in the middle. Right. Well, or you think that's still electricity? <clears throat> no, that, well, and here's the other thing is that airplanes, when they're on the ground, follow lines, center follow lines on, on the thing. And That's true. In the in, in this time period, cars? no, in the, but in this time period, aircraft were kind of futuristic. It's what the rich people. Ah. So anything that you know, like the um, in the that previous one where they had the um, the jet in you know, nacelles, you know that sort of oh, thing. Oh yeah, the blue car. 
Yeah. Like like Don's? Yeah. And so I think anything that, that hints at aircraft was oh okay. Terminator. Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. And yeah, look at the swoop look at the building over there though. That the swooping this this yeah. on ramp thing? Yeah, going up there's to that cars building. There. Yeah. So and it's all about the car. Yeah, there's it's another. all about if you notice no sidewalk, but it's that's true. You can drive to everywhere. Okay. This is a while ago, 22. Predict the future is not easy, but when they let them, their imaginations fly, artists portrayed a vision that was occasionally ahead of their time. By its very nature, the term retrofuturism needed us to wait until the 80s to have enough material to be able to define it. I love these. Did retrofuturism use magazines as windows to the future? And of course, popular science. Mm -hmm. Very good examples yeah. of they and they do it now too. They talk about future stuff all the time now. Mm -hmm. That was their that was their oh scroll yeah. back down. Take a look at, at the um at that panel there. Right here? No, there. Oh we've got they're... something very similar in our car. Yeah, now. we do. It's like computerized <clears throat> center mo yeah, monitor center console, thing. Yeah. 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 Interesting. This is kind of a neat picture. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're all following these center lines. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there it is. There's our panel in the, in the middle of the car. Mm -hmm. Boy, they got that one right, right? Mm -hmm. That was the thing. They Some of these talk about what did they get right? What did they get wrong? Oh, Magic Beam Highway. So that's a control strips autopilot kit. Ah, so it was driver, driver self. Okay. Yep. But boy, look at the kind of fins and look yeah. at that fin. Oh, fins are cool. <laughs> All right, so it goes. Oh, here we go with the. Uh, no, that's they that actually say. It. No, but I don't, they don't say it in this one. But yeah, you could. What uh, what does Disney have to do with the retrofuturistic highways? Oh, and yeah. Tomorrowland is in some of these too. Yeah, in fact, Disney was very into um, transportation. You mean Walt was? Walt was. Walt, yes, Mr. Walt Disney. Yeah. Yeah, so Tomorrowland, a lot of that park was themed around transportation. Yes, it was. You know, it is. train around the train That's still around running. It, had the monorail going all over mm -hmm. the place. Yep. Um, there was, you know, another train ride that went through the the old west that they pulled out. Um, they've got the submarine. Yeah. They have the submarine's gone now. Submarine's gone now. Okay. Oh, that's too bad. Um, they've had the cars. You know that that you drove around. It was all, mm -hmm. you know, it was all about um, about transportation. That was his one of his big things. Right. Well, I think a lot of it was. Um, you had told me it was um, sponsored by big companies, right? Well, yeah. Um, my dad used to work for a company called Bud Wheels that made mm -hmm. wheels and brakes and trains. And the train that ran around Disneyland had the Bud logo on it. B-U-D-D oh, with a red oh, no kidding. bar through it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Disney wanted to build a monorail going to Long Beach Harbor, mm. um, L.A. Harbor, because that would bring people right in. Mm. And they wouldn't allow it. Hmm. But, he, you know, we could have had. Well, in know, downtown L.A. too. I remember um, the uh, AAA out uh, had, well, maybe it's the whole country, but they have, they had or had, uh, have or had uh, a magazine, West Westways, mm -hmm. and there was a whole article in there by Ray, Ray Bradbury about, I guess a company offered to bring Los Angeles, and they put it in a monorail. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to collect the fees from people riding it, and talked about how that would revitalize the area and bring restaurants and more people into town and. And it would have been so cool for L.A. because it would fit right in with L.A. Mm -hmm. But nope, L.A. turned it down. So this this site, we're back on this site. <coughs> um, and they do all the all the graphics things, but they talk about retrofuturism is a term that refers to how predictions of design from the future were depicted in an earlier era and how some modern day aesthetics combine futuristic technology and old fashioned design. <laughs> so there you go. It's it goes either way and again they have the history of these are wonderful because yes they're they're hawking their wares you know this 
vintage vectors, very cool, but they tell they tell you some good stuff. History of retrofuturism. And they dive in. Look at these. That, that neat. So these are modern. They've created these more recently. And they just have some wonderful stuff. They talk about these comic books. Yep, look at that. Art Deco, Diesel Punk, all kinds of aspects in here you can see. And they actually talk about some of them too. Look at that. That's very definitely more modern. I think they have a little bit about that too. So, uh, that looks like diesel, right? Yeah. Back to the 80s. And these are their these are their their graphics. Characteristics of so yeah, you can you can dive right into all this. <laughs> ah, this is a good one. Captain Marvel Jr. I I love what they talked about. Look at the buildings in here. And look at this, this like even the even the lettering uh -huh. has aspects of this. Uh, uh -huh. I think they talk about it right there. No design touches on the buildings, the background, especially their sleek rounded geometric shapes. Yep. So yeah. And I have a lot. I have a lot here. Do we want to? Here it is. How many movies? Talk about that. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I don't even know what this one in the middle is. Do you know what that one is, Jeff? I thought I knew, but I don't remember now. But yeah, they they can they they take you into. I guess this is a new movie, a new show, a new episode. Apple Plus. Yeah. Um... Tomorrowland. Yeah. There you go. I was not thrilled with the Tomorrowland movie. Yeah. It I took, thought it was cool. It took something that was all about a bright future and turned it dystopian. And it's like, ah, oh, for crying out loud. The Incredibles. It's kind of like, yes. Oh, there gritty. it is. Yeah. Oh, gritty. Oh, that's that's new and inter interesting. No, it's not. <laughs> There's the movie Sky Cabinet in the World of Tomorrow. That's the one you were thinking about. Right? Yeah. And that's very diesel punk. Yeah, it is. Of course, when I saw it, I didn't didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Well, diesel punk is a new is a new term. Well, but look, Rocketeer also nineteen ninety one. Yeah, not that not that new. Right, but that so diesel punk adventure from the Rocketeer. Yeah, well, they're calling it diesel punk now, but then okay. it was just, um, you know, I guess um, Art Deco. Ah, okay. It runs through all this though. Mm -hmm. But I do like the look at the feel. That's cool. Loki. Has yes. anyone seen it out there? That's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're... Uh, just the 70s style, um, 60s, 70s style chairs with mm -hmm. the very futuristic stuff that you're seeing outside the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mid century modern. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see. Oh. I think this is kind of, oh, I don't know. You said that was. Space Station 76. <laughs> it's, it's 2014. It's. A send up of a bunch of the 70s movies, and I couldn't sit through the whole thing. <laughs> it's pretty darn awful. I thought we saw this, but I don't remember it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We haven't seen it. We haven't. Okay. I like this. The Umbrella Academy definitely, definitely has some mixtures of styles and mm -hmm. different things. I think movies are a great place to see. This kind of stuff. Oh, we got a comment. We got a comment. Oh. I loved Loki, but it ended. Oh, and they're not doing more? I thought they are. Oh. I thought they're doing more. but That'd um... be cool. Yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> all right. Okay, that's the end of that one. What else do we have? Again, all kinds of different articles you can read forever. <laughs> you can go on and on. And it's good stuff. What is this one here? It wasn't there before. Uh, yeah, how people of the past imagine the future. That's the basic idea. All right, what else do we have? Here we go. Tomorrowland, or well, Tomorrowland in Disneyland. And that's a pretty good depiction of what you can see in that yep. area of the park, which is actually out here in California. Mm -hmm. Although it's very stylized, and there's a lot more there than there was, than there actually was, but that's. Mm. Yeah, that's a salesman's version of what, what yeah. was in the park, but that's cool. Yeah. And, you know, we, we saw a lot of these different houses and stuff, like see, very definitely the aspects of nature. 
Yeah. Inside and outside, not a lot of distinction between the two. Yeah. And there's a bunch of them here. Let's see. What's this one? Oh. Yeah, I really like this. And this is a good close-up of it, but then you get to see the whole house. You know, more of the house. It was almost outside, but still a house. Ish. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh these nice. are pretty cool. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I hadn't seen that one before. 30 predictions from Retro Future that were either a hit or miss. Oh, this is that article that talked about. Yep, we did. We got this one. Look at that. We can do that with our phones. Doesn't look like that. Painted in 1930. And then there's some that we that weren't. Of course, there's the, the you know, We've got that version of it. Yeah. Phones and cars now. Right. But it doesn't have the... I love those little those little devices you played with, but right, Viewmaster. Yeah, the Viewmaster, but we don't have that. Right. Well, we have the electronic version. That's much better because the maps update. Okay. All right. And food delivery service. It's amazing. Nope, not balloons. Lake support lake walk, lake walking. It's kind of fascinating though. I mean, this is what people thought life would be like. I like the horse. <laughs> yeah, a horse would put oh. up with that. <laughs> and it'd have to be a much bigger balloon, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right. Television newspaper. Well, we're kind of getting there with electric paper. Mm -hmm. And they showed that on uh, 2001, too. Yeah. Self-driving cars. Again, down the middle of the road. Oh, that's actually one of those other images, but it's yeah. kind of They monochrome it. But the family's playing a game. They're not driving. The mm -hmm. car is driving itself. Well, and that's what happens in a Tesla right yep. before they run into someone. <laughs> Easy there. All right. What's this one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, not exactly. Uh, that could have been a COVID response right <laughs> yeah, there. That's what they're saying. 1962. Oh, I like this. Ship's cat. Someday. Mm -hmm. Future of phones. It doesn't look that much different, but the little the little cell phone does. James Bond receives a text via his smartwatch. <laughs> the spy who loved me. Eh, similar. Future future is a concept for jetliner air travel. See, these That'd are be the kind cool. of things that I like. Totally impractical. But. <laughs> That would be cool. But they have ships like that. You go out on a cruise yep. and they've got a pool and mm -hmm. a deck. It looks very much like a, a cruise ship. Well, that's what they're saying. Basically a flying mm -hmm. cruise ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Japanese vision of the future classroom. <laughs> I love this. The odd part is that it included small robots to wrap students on the head when misbehaving. There it is. Right there. <laughs> All right. Okay, this is in 1989. VR in 1989. I don't know if anybody, of you, any of you have out there have tried these. Yeah, it's not great. I think uh, augmented reality, a AR versus uh, versus VR. Augmented, I can see being being pretty cool, maybe. Yeah, seeing overlays of mm -hmm. things like you look at a store and you see what's in it. Whether it's open, whether it's closed. Or you can order stuff. Yeah. Or even, I think of it as when you go places. And, in fact, we had something similar. Uh, we went to Vienna. And we took this, what was it? I think it just went up in the air. Not quite a merry, uh, merry round thing. But, um, I forget. But it had on the top of the actual cabin, the things you would see in the area. It had mm -hmm. little pictures of it, what it was called. And then you can go, oh, there it is. Yeah, I see that. So that's the kind of thing I would pre prefer. Mm -hmm. This stuff is just very disorienting. R2 Deco. <laughs> uh, maybe this was the inspiration for, I don't know. I think that's a modern thing if someone, maybe. someone made an R2D2 in the Deco style. You think so? Yes. All right. So then that's the going the other way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How NASA imagined life in space. Well, this is very classic. Mm -hmm. um, from the book, um, Gerard K. O'Neill's book. Um, oh. Yeah, what's the title? 
Oh, shoot. I, yeah. Yeah, talking about the space stations. <laughs> oh, boy. Fashions of 1950 as predicted on the cover of Life magazine in 1914. Oh, this is pretty funny. So, yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. 1981 vision of suburbia after there's no more room left for suburbs. Well, I do like the, the trees and stuff around the house. I mean, not a terrible idea. Home shopping in the 1940s. Well, well go back to the previous one. Sure. Because no room, no room. Look at all this room. Yeah, look at all the room. Yeah, I know that too. Well, this is, we've got this home shopping network. Yep. In the 1940s, they predicted this. Isn't that something? Oh, Daniel says, Hi, Hi Frontier. Frontier. Yep. That's, yes. That's O'Neill's. Thank you very much. Yep. Futuristic road trip with the family. Well, we got this one here. You sit there and plug the kid into their iPhone. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so it's very elaborate. Yeah. What is this for food? Look at that pizzeria. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that car is one and a half times as wide as the car would be, but hey. <laughs> That's trippy. Still driving, though. What's up with that? City of the Future is imagined in 1908. Not too bad. There's skywalks in, like, Chicago mm -hmm. and stuff. Future, we were promised. Is that a flying car? Yeah. This is supposed to be a hover car. Soviet vision. Of the I love these Soviet ones. Look at this. Definitely different. As long as it keeps going, that works. <laughs> as soon as it slows down, not good. <laughs> well, yeah. Futures of Netherlands drawn in 1970. Boy, that's busy. Smart watch. They're a little bit different now. Seiko. Interesting. The 2020 Olympics. Not completely accurate. Oh, nothing in space. Nope, we don't have space stuff. One side of House of the Future. 1957. This is a real place, isn't it? Yeah. In of fact, there, <laughs> there was one of those in Disneyland, but it... Um, oh, okay. But they tore it down in the late 60s oh. because it was just falling apart. Oh, okay. But there is one in the Henry... Um, in the... Um, Henry Ford Museum in Detroit. Oh, okay. Wow. That'd be an interesting place to live. Uh -huh. Worst spacesuit design ever. Especially on a planet with no atmosphere. Okay. Well, actually, there's not a bad design because you need yeah. to cover your mouth and your lungs for breathing. Okay. All right. So as long as it wasn't a skin irritant in the atmosphere uh -huh. or no atmosphere completely, okay. you know, to cause burst capillaries, yeah. that would actually work for a lot of situations. Now, I don't necessarily think glass would be a good fit for that, <laughs> but that would actually work. Okay. Oh, yes. Matt, Major Matt Mason. <laughs> This was an actual spacesuit Grumman Aircraft Corp tried to sell NASA in 1962. And they made a series of toys out of that sort of thing. Oh, um, that's why it looks so familiar. Yeah. And they ran the ads. Cliff might not have seen this, but they ran the ads for those toys so much that most of us who grew up in that time period thought that there was an actual cartoon about it. Oh, but wow. no, it was just the ads. It was just My the ads goodness. that we saw. Teenagers of the 21st century. I didn't see this one yet. No, this. You're cooking with super atomic radiation, Arky. Well, well if you you're, were. You're cooking with gas was the, yes. was the big thing. Um, Neutron High School. That's, um, yeah. That's an Archie's style. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Nuke proof underground city below Manhattan, 1969. Okay, all right. A little claustrophobic, but hey. All right, 
So let's see what else do we have here. Ah, I didn't put this all the way at the top. Here's how people in the past imagine we'd be living in the 21st century. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Just spray down your living room. And they've actually, I love what they've done with this. They have created this in reality from images. Oh, Daniel, I ran my major ma mason down his zip line. Yep. Oh, cool. <laughs> I, I had I had the moon rover, which was just basically um, <laughs> really over the top um, design. So, so I know a lot of people could have used this. <laughs> yeah. You notice the drain in the middle of the floor. Right, right there. Well, it was based on, there's a close-up of, on this picture of where in the future you could just hose down your living room. Well, that'd be ready to go. And that's when plastics were starting to come in. Oh, okay. And so that was like, ooh, with plastics, it's easy to clean. Kitchen in the 60s. This is the version they've created from, like, got a close-up of the the oven mm -hmm. of this photo. Oh, and I've seen I've seen real refrigerator pictures from stuff like the 50s. They were fantastic. I'm like, why don't we have that now? We just got like this big box and they had like oh it was so cool. Different little places to put things and ours are kind of sucky. <laughs> Master bedroom. The one they did up from that was a close up. Uh from oh Yep, the inspiration photo. This is amazing how well they have recreated these, you know, graphic pictures into a real life. Yeah, um, even the bookshelves. Yeah. I don't know if that's real life or if that's oh, just you, computer. Oh, generated. like uh, computer graphics? Yeah, I think that's computer graphics. Maybe. The person looks kind of like it, but the rest looks pretty real to me. No, but. it doesn't. It me. doesn't? Okay. Yeah. So Interesting. The lighting, the way the light hits things isn't quite realistic in some some cases okay <clears throat> i don't know it seems real to me but that's the picture game room yeah you're, you're probably right about the see the people is what clues me mm -hmm. so this is this is the and i thought they said they did do these i don't remember but that was here's the inspirational image They're pretty neat. And instead of games, of course, they had pinball machines there. Yeah. Bathroom, 1980s. Who has that much room for a bathroom? Well, it means your rest of your house is big. But it's got some different kinds of... I don't know if you'd put this in a bathroom, but unless you want to spend your time there, there's the inspirational photo. <laughs> I think these are so cool. Dressing room. Well, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> would you sit still for that maybe all right i just we could go on and on look at these beautiful look at the rocket yay so cool all right an atomic age yeah when uh, nuclear war cold war that sort of thing oh the movie elysium, elysium. um hmm that doesn't ring any bells to me. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, Atomic Age came out of the Cold War. Yeah. And you can read all this stuff. There's the there's the Googie building again. Look at this. Caraclonic television. <laughs> yeah, looking like a space helmet. Yeah. Oh, and I have these pictures up too. Look at this. So this is an example of Atomic Age design. And there's there's a whole bunch more here. You can keep going through. There's all those pictures, only big. What do we got? Oh, Atomic Age design from Pinterest. I love the cats. I love the cats. And this is a really neat, I like that. And yeah. I remember playing stuff like that, oh, in, and our, that in our homes. Yeah. And those those are decals. That's not wallpaper. Those are decals. So yeah. you can put those on, on your wall. Yeah. In fact, I think I went to the, where is it? I got the, ah, shoot, somewhere in here. But that's just a quick overview of other... Yeah, another one these people did, Atomic Age Design. Yeah, we've been going long here, so let me just run through these. Look at that, that Atomic. It is so beautiful. Etsy. Stuff you can buy. Here it is. There's the one. Decals. And you can get <laughs> your family name for your house. Look at this thing, too. 
That looks a lot like the Star Trek communicator, doesn't it? Uh huh. All right, and things you can use in your home. Just all kinds of different things. Yeah, I have a lot of these. Jetsons, right? Isn't that the yep. Jetsons? Yep. All right. So I think everybody's getting antsy. You certainly look like you are. <laughs> Shall we get back to, uh, uh, seriously, I could go. I have lots and lots of, including this Facebook group. Look at this. Atomic Retro Sci-Fi. <laughs> yep, there you go. There she is. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for your patience. I just wanted to really kind of demonstrate some of these fun things because they're fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we found so many more. But whatever you choose to call it, Everyday Space or Style can be another way you can participate in this realm of hopeful optimism expressed by Googie Atomic Age, Mid-Century Modern Designs. And what do you like best of these styles? Be interesting to see, to hear from you. All right, let's see. We've got a couple more segments for the show. Uh, stellar events this week. March 31st through April 7th. March 31st, the moon is at Apogee. And Venus and Uranus, Uranus are in conjunction. April 6th is a pink is a full pink moon. April 7th, Friday night show. It's Good Friday, and we'll do a profile and we'll tell tell you who we'll profile shortly. Find us Friday at 9 p.m. Pacific time on the Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. And the moon is in descending mode. And the first time I read that, I heard Depeche mode. But I <laughs> we still have just the two events, Space Symposium, April 17th to 20th uh, at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs. That's hosted by the Space Foundation. Uh, Space Education Symposium is the very next day, April 21st. 8 to 4 p.m. Pacific time. That's actually online. Anybody in the world can catch that. Unless you're at work like me. <laughs> it's a full day conference. Uh, let's pop the link in for you. I'll put that right in the comments so you got that. It should be clickable once I add it to you. there. Because uh, I think that's going to be really cool. That's where Jeff went last November. And he he found some, some good guests for us mm -hmm. from that. All right. Uh, and then you. You're okay. We're almost done. If Thanks for your patience. If you or someone you know has done something interesting involving space exploration, science, or astronomy, we'd love to share our live. Join us again next Friday, April 7th, and we'll profile Elon Musk. Of course, we've all heard of Elon. We know some things about him. What don't we know? We're going to try and find out. Mm -hmm. All right. Any more questions from you? How about you? Got anything else? No. Nope. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks so much for being here with us. Uh, Daniel and Cliff and Dawn, and I know Scott was in here. And, and uh, someone new. Um, Jeremy. Jeremy, and someone else, too. Ryan. Ryan, yep. Did we get them all? Yep, I think so. Awesome. Thanks so much, folks, for being with us. You have a really great week. We'll see you next Friday. Yep. Good night. Good night. Where's the button? There it is.